Why do coffee shops attract the Nijeds? Well, Glenn, the reason is uh, because, well, there's a ton of reasons, so actually we're going to uh, um, jump back and forth here giving you a few of them. One to start with is mood. The coffee shops tend to uh, put a lot of emphasis on mood. It's one of their strongest selling features as a, as a product. And Nijez tend to be very uh, moved by mood. Having um, uh, Jez, obviously they are, they are values-based mojos, but having the Nez over the Jez makes them very sensitive to having their imaginations uh, spurred um, with um, you know, mood music or mood lighting. So in the same way that like um, a movie set Nijeds are very represented in movies, for example, they tend to respond um, easily. They are, they're, they're, they're sensitive to uh, the lighting and the props of a scene. You give them a little makeup, you give them a few props, and, and easily their imagination is stirred. So right there, uh, coffee shops uh, tend to uh, stir the imagination, although the more indie they are, the more they'll see this. The more uh, chain coffee shop they are, the, the less. But still, overall, coffee shops kind of have an indie sort of theme. Hey Glenn, uh, good question. A couple more things about Nijez and coffee, sh uh, coffee shops. <laughs> not coffee shops, those are not as fun as coffee shops. But um, another reason is that a lot of them tend to have a counterculture vibe to them. Maybe not mainstream coffee shops, but a lot of Nijez are attracted to um, less mainstream coffee shops and there tend to be a lot around certain areas. Like for instance, Long Beach, we have a handful around here that are really cool. And um, they just have a sense of being somewhere outside of the norm, that you're not necessarily supporting like um, the cookie cutter way of life that everybody else does it, and so um, they just feel kind of counterculture somehow. Going along with the mood a bit more is the fact that uh, mood tends to be transportive. It sort of takes you to other places, and coffee shops in general have the feeling of something you're doing when you're on the move, like being in an airport or in a you know, port of call or something. And for that reason, it, it gives the feeling that you maybe are traveling when you're not. So Nijez, from what we'd observed, although they don't necessarily uh, make a lot of money, um, say overall, I mean, many Nijez are very successful, but uh, Nijez often don't place as much emphasis on making money as, as some other mojos do. But you'll notice that of the money they have, considering their income bracket, that we notice them a lot at coffee shops, restaurants, um, CD uh, music stores, things like this. And so we're still unfolding the data. The data is, is unfolding. But what we're seeing right now, what it looks like, um, is that they spend more of their discretionary income on things that transport them. So books, uh, music, uh, going to restaurants, particularly ethnic restaurants or something exotic, that's preferred as well. And because uh, you know it's more mainstream the restaurant, the more mainstream the mojos that go there. The more alternative or exotic the, the restaurant or coffee shop or whatever is, the Nijez will be more so there. And I think it is because it feels like you're traveling to another land. Why they, they tend to like um, uh, reading books about fantasy lands or you know exotic places in the world because they, they like to imagine that they are there. And coffee shops tend to uh, help out with that. Another reason why Nijez like coffee shops is because they're conducive to conversation. And um, Nijez are some of the mojos that actually um, are really deeply fed and impacted by having good conversations with people by sharing ideas um, because we tend to be very conceptual and we like sharing what we know with other people and so coffee shops are a way a place that you can go to talk without being overly hassled or interrupted or you don't have to have your mind on like checking out something at the grocery store or whatever um, so it tends to be like not distracting um, and also a place where you can linger and take your time can buy a tea or coffee and stay for, you know, a while and not feel rushed. What else is I saying on that? <laughs> Basically, um, Najez's normal way of being is uh, the environment doesn't tend to favor that, but coffee shops do, and one way they do this is by being conducive to conversation, because it's like a ritual. Normally, um, if you're at home or something, it wouldn't strike you as much as now is the time to talk because there's so much uh, hustle and bustle or other things to do. But at a coffee shop, it's almost like it summons this ritual of now is the time and a place for us to talk, which is really important um, 
thing in French has to do with each other. Go! Going along with what Nietzsche said about the coffee shops, the, the, the culture around them is conducive to having conversation, also to lingering. Well, one that kind of goes along with that, is especially say um, for, well, Nietzsche I also really like to read as well, so both of them are jazz, but it's, it's kind of like a really cool library. And actually you'll find a lot of Najez in libraries as well, particularly when you get over to like, you know, the science fantasy section and so forth. Although we also like psychology and just about everything else. But um, if you're like specifically looking for Najez and not other mojos, the more indie, the more sci fantasy you get, the, the more you'll be getting exclusively that mojo. All the Najez, we, we, we go almost everywhere else. So in this context, we're looking to just, you know, kind of find like the purest pool of them. That will really purify the pool of Najez is by uh, doing those things. And in coffee shops, reading books is something that is considered normal and expected. You go there and usually you conversate, or you read, or you um, people watch. <laughs> people watching is so much fun, and coffee shops tend to attract the most interesting people, and Najez are very voyeuristic, especially Naiji, but Nija also like to monitor the environment and just see like all the different people that come in and what they're wearing, what their stories are, what they're talking about. Well, maybe not like eavesdropping so much, but <laughs> uh, what else about people watching? So, um, people watching is kind of a just a natural form of mojo reading. Like Nijes are, are constantly mojo reading without calling it mojo reading necessarily. And coffee shops, because of their like port of call feel, um, tend to be tend to attract all different kinds of people. And so if you want to watch the most interesting people, coffee shops are a good place to go do that because they tend to attract people from a wide diversity of backgrounds and um, just so many different, like, like bird watching, different birds to watch. <laughs> and you'll also notice that um, some people go to coffee shops and they just grab a coffee on the way to work and they kind of rush out and then other people they get a drink and they linger. And Nijez tend to be the people who are less in a rush to get out of the coffee house and more to find an excuse to stay and to talk and hang out and see what happens. There's really a sense of like, of um, potential something could happen in a coffee shop air all the time. Um, so it's a really good place to, to watch people and watch for Nijez because they tend to be gravitated towards there. Awesome. We're crushing this. Yay! I'm not really like, you know, cocky, but I'm crushing this. I think we're crushing this. I think we're doing pretty damn good. <laughs> this is going to be cool with the MPB uh, shifting back and forth like that. Playing off what Nietzsche said about there being like the sense of possibility in the air of a, a book could happen, one of those things is meeting new people. Often when you are going to uh, get together to uh, you know, a date, obviously you can meet a coffee shop, somebody's going to be neutral ground uh, to meet at. But there's also, uh, for example, if you're going to meet up to start a club about something, a lot of times a first meeting spot for a new venture, a new club, a new group of friends doing something, you know what I mean? If you're going to like uh, gather some new friends that you just made recently and then go out to a movie together, whatever, a lot of times you rally up this adventuring team at the coffee shop. The coffee shop is kind of like a pub. You know, particularly in the context, not like modern day, but more like RPG game. Like you're playing a fantasy RPG game, generally you go to the inn or some place where uh, characters come in and out of and adventures happen. So for Nijez, the kind of um, uh, philosophical, artistic, uh, revolutionary adventures they want to have and, uh, and to talk about, that's going to be more prevalent um, at the coffee shop. Speaking of neutral ground, that kind of brings up something else, which is in a lot of movies, you'll see the motif of you know, secret agents meeting at like a coffee shop. Uh, that you see that like all over the world. It can be an Asian um, uh, tea shop. It can be a European classic cafe, you know, you know, cappuccino and espresso kind of deal there. But uh, it can be South American, it doesn't matter. There's something about, it's similar to a bar. Where every country you go to, there tends to be bars and coffee shops. And bars also, if they have music and in alternative, can also have a jazz as well. Uh, but the coffee shops, again, is going to be more pure because it tends to actually emphasize mm, conversation and, and to conversate about, I don't know, philosophical kind of topics. 
Anyway, with Najez, uh, they actually tend to be heavily represented in movies, and that would lead one to believe they're heavily represented in fans of movies. So when they're in a coffee shop and they meet up their friends and have their special drinks or whatever and meet over the corner and conversate and look around the world, it feels a bit like you're in a movie. And Najez like to feel like they're living a life that would be movie worthy. Coach was saying about there being like this sense of like a revolutionary vibe. Uh, coffee shops tend to have a historical uh, connection or lineage with things like salons and um, other intellectual kind of revolutionary activities. Like for instance, in the French Revolution, um, they were these salons were places where the prominent intellectuals at the time, but also like artists and really avant-garde people, met to um, talk about revolutionary themes and they couldn't be caught by the authorities and um, it was just a huge source of um, like a global network not at the time but now coffee shops have become a global network of a place to exchange ideas so um, that's another thing that Nisha is like about coffee shops so salons historically were about spreading ideas and now you can draw like a similar parallel with cafes all over the world, no matter if the beverages are different, um, it's, there tends to be a connection with the internet. And the internet is a huge, obviously, modern day equivalent of the spread of ideas. So you both have niches talking, internet access, and um, ideas spreading. For this reason, a good way to get into the indie scene, and the indie scene, the independent scene, is a good place to find niches. So if you want to find the indie scene of your town, generally you can look for uh, indie style coffee shops. And when you go there, you find the most indie coffee shop you can in whatever town or city you go to, and then go to their bulletin board. Go to their bulletin board, go to their flyer section, we usually have those, or talk to the barista or coffee person or whatever, and they will generally be able to put you into the pipeline of the music scene, of the kind of like um, uh, political activism uh, activities. Um, you often will see flyers for museums and cultural events and rallies and, and, and talks about provocative um, social subjects. All those kinds of things are right there. So often uh, Nijez can feel like, where's my adventure? That's where your, your adventure often is as far as like a quick pipeline into it. So if you were to be in an RPG game and you want to know where are my adventures, kind of like an MMORPG game or something like that, you're walking around like, where is it? That's where you go if you're in a jazz. Find the most indie town, look up your newspaper, find the local paper, uh, and they'll have like advertisers in the back for these kinds of things. Find the most indie um, uh, collection of coffee shops you can. Uh, one, if that's all you have, but if you can't, get like maybe like five, and then just uh, make that route, uh, keep spending time in those a uh, little uh, 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 in one each day and find out um, who's who. And often you'll notice something is that um, if you look at say a handful of indie shops, you'll start seeing some of the same people and organizations and whatnot on the flyers. And that's when you know you're starting to have canvassed the indie scene of that bubble. So thanks for the question, Glenn. I think this will be a really interesting topic for a lot of Nijes out there. Um, so all you Nijes out there, have fun finding indie coffee shops. And if there aren't places like those, there should be like other um, places with similar um, gravitational pull for Nijes. So um, have fun finding them. Go! <laughs>